the person that shows up is in no way <laughs> the person in the pictures. That's common. Or they come in and they sit down. I remember one lady came in and sat down, spoke with me for five minutes, and she said, I'm illegally parked. I'll be back. And she never came back. <laughs> Aww. Hey, listen, it happens. Yeah. I, I did that one time, but I was just... Well, you did. Okay, I was semi-honest. Welcome to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Here's your host, Marcus. Welcome to another episode of Secrets of a Sugar Daddy, the number one sugar dating podcast in the world, where we pull back the curtains on the good, the bad, and Lily, the very shocking stories of sugar dating. You betcha. Thanks for joining us today. How are you? I am great. Yeah? Yes. So you've been sugar daddyless? Been sugar daddyless for a hot minute. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I her. broke things off with my yeah. monthly arrangement guy. Yeah. How, how's it been going? It's been going wonderful. I've been on some meet and greets and had some nice dates and... I'm just back into the swing of it. <laughs> now, now, you're one that'll... So, Lily works for me, and she's my personal secretary, kind of just to do it all. And she'll say, hey, I've got a 9.30 coffee <laughs> meet and greet. Yeah, so, Girl Friday uh, needs a break. Yeah, coffee so she's break. off running around, having coffee, meeting people, meeting all kinds of interesting people. And one of those people is here today, a sugar daddy that uh, I guess you had coffee with? Yeah, we had coffee recently. And we did. And uh, I heard his voice. You showed me his uh, vibe yes. on, on Seeking. And I, Absolutely. I heard his voice. I said, get that guy in here. Yeah, so you sugar daddies and sugar babies, the vibe thing really works because this particular gentleman had sort of messaged me and I didn't really, I think we were like chatted back and forth on the, on the app a couple times, Lily, right? You're being delicate. You weren't interested. Okay, all right. <laughs> I did not just visually feel drawn to this gentleman. And then I saw he posted a vibe and I heard his voice and he's just so well-spoken and intelligent and genuine that I was like, I'm going to have coffee with him. And, and we did. And it was great. And welcome Jack to the program. How are you today? Hello, everybody. You, you do have a wonderful voice. I'm very jealous. Well, I'm an ex-radio guy. Oh, you are? So, yeah. Oh, that's cool. So where'd you originally grow up and, and have your roots? Well, my roots are New York City. Oh. It's been a long time since I've been back there. I mean, most of my adult life I spent in Atlanta or Chicago okay. or San Francisco for the last 30 years here. Okay. Oh, and 30 I, years? Yeah. 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 I've been here for 25, so we've seen a lot of movement and growth in this area. It is an easy place to live compared to the other locations. I think so, too. Very much. I love Arizona. I love Maricopa County. Yep. So I think it has I. a lot of opportunity. All right, so you've been here for 30 years, and what, what is your age? 66. 66, you look amazing. <laughs> That's goals for me. Thanks, Smooth Talker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing, one thing Are I've you learned, hitting on my sugar daddy? <laughs> well, one thing I've learned from the whole process of sugar dating is you need to believe about 10% of what you hear. <laughs> 10% on a good day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's accurate. So, yeah. All right. Let's just start from the beginning, Jack. Married, kids, nope. where did... Not married, no kids. Never married? No. Never, never had kids? No. Okay. I was married, but I never had kids. So that was an interesting experience. It just never happened for you? You're just not the marrying type? The answer to that is actually yes and no. I remember my conversation with Lily and... The actual answer to the question is, I haven't been married in the 21st century. If you go back 30 years, yes, for about 10 years. But that's one of those situations. It was very different than most marriages. She was a highly intelligent woman, a research scientist. And one day she just basically decided, I want my career. I'd rather not have anything else. Sayonara. Mm -hmm. So, and that was it. And I just decided, I'll tell you what I told Lily. I said, I'm just not going to put myself in that position again. And I never have. Plus the fact, I don't like getting married for practice. I mean, <laughs> and there was one other thing, and that was by that time, I was pretty sure that I'd have a hard time being monogamous. 
And I just couldn't look somebody in the eye and say, just to get one further step into the relationship and say, hey, listen, yes, it's you till the end of my life, knowing that it probably wasn't. I just couldn't do it. So there have been some long relationships, but so far as looking at somebody, just to get them where I want to get them and say, yes, it's you forever, darling. Couldn't do it. Yeah, that's tough. I yeah. found myself, even though my marriage was 16 years and I never strayed, it was just very difficult. And we've inter- actually interviewed sugar daddies who are married mm-hmm. with their wife's consent, have sugar babies on the side. Yep. And they've actually come back to us and told us it made their marriage stronger and happier because they were fulfilling what was missing. Well, I've always found it difficult to find everything I wanted in the same person for a very extended period of time. It might happen for four years or five or seven or eight, and it has happened for that length of time. Mm -hmm. But at some point, I began to look around. And I knew that some men are wired to be that. I think more men are wired to be that way than are willing to admit that yeah. they're that way. And I just had no illusions about it. And I just couldn't bring myself to say, yes, I'm fundamentally monogamous. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and it's as simple as that. So, so how long have you been on the seeking site? Uh, probably seven or eight years. I got there completely by accident. I was out of a long relationship. I decided I wanted a social life again. I wasn't meeting anybody at work or anybody where I volunteered or anybody walking the streets or in the grocery or in the produce department at the grocery store. I mean, that's, man, I've got to tell you, that is a myth. At least for me, that's You know what? I, I actually brought that up in a Did past you? episode. Like, <laughs> who, who's actually meeting people uh-huh. in a supermarket? Because... I feel like if I went and talked to a strange lady, I might get maced, <laughs> you know, especially in the big city. I've yeah. met some guys in the Costco. Well, yeah, <laughs> but you're, you're just a chatty <laughs> Kathy. That's true. Well, uh, Lily has a little more going for herself than I have going for myself. <laughs> so, uh-huh. Just to put that extremely you're delicately. Sweet. No, <laughs> it's a, a little dose of reality there. But I did a web search. Okay. I wasn't searching for a sugar daddy site. I didn't know they existed. I've heard sugar daddy this, sugar daddy that. Hey, I live in North Scottsdale. There are all kinds of forms of sugar daddy-ism that I see all around me every day. I bet Scottsdale is one of the sugar daddy capitals oh, of oh, the world. I would say yes. I went into <laughs> Hammer's Jewelry on North Scottsdale Road. Ted Hammer runs a very good jewelry store up there. I know him slightly. And I'm in there picking up a $700 bracelet for my significant other. I think I told you, you this. You did tell me I this. Did. And I'm standing there, and if you pulled up in a Mercedes, you had underperformed with regard to your vehicle. <laughs> oh, I mean, they one were of those. pulling up in silver clouds and Bentleys yeah. and Lamborghinis. Wow. And they're coming in, and these young, spectacular-looking women are coming in. And the guys are, this is not a kind thing to say, they're shot. I mean, we're, talk, we're talking walkers, and I'm not exaggerating, walkers, oxygen tanks. And I'm looking at all of this, and I'm thinking, and they're picking up $40,000 Rolexes, $25,000 tennis bracelets. I'm picking up a $700 David Yarman. And I thought, okay, wrong store, wrong place. And Ted came out after I waited about 15 minutes. He said, what do you think of all this? And I said, Ted, is it like this every Christmas? He said, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that is not officially named sugar daddyism, but I've always thought that sugar daddyism was essentially the exchange of, let's put it delicately, intimacy. And there are all kinds of intimacy. It can be sex, it can be company. It's frequently a combination of the both for security. And security can be a variety of things. It can be a marriage to a man who will keep you secure, mm-hmm. or it can be as simple as we meet and you get a cash gift. And that whole spectrum of intimacy for security, it runs all the way from sugar daddyism and friends with benefits and helping out people who you've been intimate with, who you like and who need help, all the way over to what they call in the United States prostitution. And I, I kind of look at that and I kind of look at it and I think of it as, well, Marijuana was illegal for a long time. And how many people has marijuana killed? 
I mean, I was in a hash bar <laughs> in 1980 in the Netherlands. That was the happiest place I've ever been in yeah. my life. Everybody was hammered, but they were all happy. And I kind of look at it, if you look at prostitution in the same light, so long as no one is being used against their will, I'm okay with it. Yeah, I mentioned, it's funny, you bringing up some points that I 100% agree on because I I grew up in an era where it was anti the drug wars, anti marijuana, bad, bad, bad. Yeah. Yeah. And this was in the eighties. Yeah. And then my mother actually came down with breast cancer and started doing mm-hmm. some research on the health yep. effects of cannabis. Mm-hmm. And she lived in Texas. So she was actually going to send my brother up to Colorado where it was legal and bring some down. So then I started doing research. I'm like, what do you mean? Nobody's ever overdosed on cannabis cannabis what's the big deal so i tried it and i'm like are you kidding me they're throwing people in jail for this yeah and obviously our laws here in the u.s have become more lax and it's become more accepted now i mean there's marijuana dispensaries almost on every corner here in arizona now you can buy it anywhere and and bring it anywhere i kind of liken that to hey what two people do consensually if i give her some financial assistance what does it matter to you i agree Right? Well, Call it what you want. I worked internationally for six years, and I spent a fair amount of time in Europe. And what you see in Europe, for the most part, is a very different attitude to all of this. If you're in France or Italy or Spain, UK is a little different. They tend to keep it under wraps over there. They've got that old Protestant thing going on, the mm-hmm. Church of England thing going mm-hmm. on. Yeah. If you go to Italy, it's completely different. If you go to France, it's completely different. The Mediterranean countries, the warmer climates, It's a very different thing. There, it's kind of, it's winked at, or it's accepted, or they have a tacit agreement, but it's done very differently than it is here. I mean, if you said sugar daddy to them, they'd probably just go, so what? Right. It just, it's kind of a non-issue. Yeah. We have a connotation, or people kind of look at it as, sugar daddy means an older gentleman who is (laughs) dating a very young girl for sex. Yes. That's, right. That's basically the connotation. And yeah. as we've discussed in many episodes of this podcast and interviewed many people, there actually, there's been studies done that 20 to 40% of the sugar babies actually don't have sex with their sugar daddies. Yeah, now, I can understand that. I, I'm amazed by it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I don't fall but, into that category. I understand it. <laughs> but I've had relationships with somebody I met on the yeah. site and where yeah. we've gone out 10, yeah. 12 times and we never had sex. I just enjoyed her company and I just never wanted to lead it there because there was some underlying issues. Yeah. I just enjoyed her company and we went well, out and did all kinds of fun things. I was at a concert with a friend and she knows I do this and she hates it. And I've known her for 30 years. Long time ago, we were boyfriend, girlfriend, and we've still remained really close friends. We know each other very well. And she looked at me, and there were about 200 people in the room before the doors opened up. She said, okay, smart guy, pick out the sugar baby. (laughs) And I looked around the room, and I said, she is. Uh, Yeah. And she looked at me, and she said, how do you know? I said, look. And I'll tell you what she's charging him, too. She's charging him. And I gave her a number, and the girl I pointed at was on her way back to the bathroom. And my friend said, I'm going back there and ask her. Back to the bathroom, they both went. She came back. My friend came back a few minutes later and said, you were right about the number. What well, was the number? I just have to know. I looked at them, and I said, okay, this is not an intimacy setup. Okay. This is an evening's date setup. He's mm-hmm. got somebody to take to a concert and maybe dinner. And I said, it's $300. And that was spot on? And that was spot on. Wow. So. Look at you. Well, <laughs> listen, I'm no expert by any means. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, after you've done it for a while, you pick up the language, you pick up on the terminology, you pick up on the going rates. Yeah. You know, you do. Okay. So, Jack called it something different than PPM. And I actually love it. You called it PPP. Pay per play, right? Yes, I did. Oh, PPP. I yes. haven't heard that uh, version. Yeah. I was like, that is... That's really cute, Mm pay-per-play. Because play can be anything. We're out and we're doing something fun. Well, if I'm interested in somebody and they're interested in getting together, what I tell them is, here's what the number is. Now, the first time we get together, we're going to play. It may be intimacy. It may not be intimacy. We'll start. 
if physically we're compatible and it appears that we like each other and we want to take it further, then it can definitely be intimacy the first time out. If at some point this much time into it, we find that we're not compatible or this isn't working, she gets exactly what I said she would get and either one of us has the opportunity to look at the other and say, I'm sorry, this really shouldn't go any further. And you pretty much both know it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's yeah. not a big surprise. And that has happened. It's happened a time or two. And I thought it was completely justified that it happened. Yeah. So leading back into you didn't know about <laughs> nothing, or, you know, being a sugar daddy, no. but you obviously were in a place where there's plenty of sugar daddies. Yep. And, be, and before the Internet and, and that, you know, the Internet's really not that old. Yeah. Relatively. But before the Internet, and before these websites, where would these people even meet these younger I, women looking for old, uh, bars, I guess? I haven't the faintest idea. <laughs> I don't know either because I'm not a good bar. Ooh, I'm not I, very good at bar. I, I could tell you a story about what I suspect on that, but we'd all get sued. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> there was a famous... Let's just say there were some dinner organizations in some well-known restaurants in town Mm -hmm. and part of the service that they offered. And there was also a network in town of restaurant owners who had access to a pool of young ladies Mm -hmm. that had been specifically trained for whatever kind of exchange you wanted. And obviously, I can't mention any names. But that but that would is, seem obvious that there, somebody would set something up like that. It's not even a slight surprise. Yeah. All right. So through the genius of online dating became, <laughs> you know, different swiping sites to meet your match. Some of them we know like Tinder and Bumble and Hinge and things like that. Did, have you tried those, been on those? Any success? I tried Tinder. Yeah. And the reason I did the vibe to begin with was because I had no illusions about the way I looked. If you look at a picture, number one, I don't like being photographed. It looks like I'm in pain and I'm trying to smile. <laughs> on virtually, virtually, it looks like a mad dog is chewing well, on Well, you my have ankle. a great in-person presence. Just some of us are not very photogenic. Doesn't come through. I don't <laughs> like being photographed and yeah. it shows. Mm-hmm. And I thought my best chance would be to put something up there that lets you see how I talked, how I yeah. moved, what the energy it was. It worked for me. I, it, yeah. like, I, I liked it too. I was sold yeah. as oh, soon as I, I saw your vibe. I contacted her before and I thought, oh, yeah. <laughs> and not interested. And I thought, okay, fine. I get it. Not everyone is for everyone. So it's as simple as that. But that's why I put it up there. And yes, it does get you a bunch more traffic. But I'm comfortable being in front of a camera. It doesn't bother me mm-hmm. to be in front of a microphone. Yeah. So then you signed up for Seeking. Yeah. Okay. And about what you said, seven, eight years ago? Seven or eight years ago. All right. Ago. You're laughing. What? <laughs> I thought it was a joke. I did this search and, you know, Match.com came yeah. up and all yeah. the other plenty of fish came up. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, yeah, I don't really need that. And then Sugar Daddy websites came up and I thought, isn't that a cute name? I had no idea what it really was. And I happened to see Seeking and I filled up my profile and I said well this is just a cute game and it got to the point where it asked me what I was worth and I thought let's play a game sure and I put a big number on there yeah and it said what do you make a year another big number I did okay I didn't do that okay <laughs> <laughs> well yeah so, you could put whatever number yeah, you want you on there. Anyone in. yeah and I went in the next morning and there was a host of responses from 20-year-olds, 21-year-olds, 25-year-olds. And I looked at all these responses, and I went in the bathroom and looked in the mirror and said, you're not getting any better looking. (laughs) (laughs) There's something else going on here. And the thing that really, and by the way, if you send me a a message and it says, hi, daddy, that's instant disqualification. (laughs) (laughs) That that does not work. I sent a message to a 50-year-old black woman who was so far out of my class cosmetically. I thought, okay, let's test this. And she responded. We set up a meet. And I said, she can't possibly look this good in person. We met at Jacqueline's the next morning for coffee. I walked in and sat down. She walked in and sat down. She was much better looking in person than she was in her picture. I love it when that happens. And I looked at her and I thought, okay, all right, this is not a joke. 
if money weren't an issue, there's no chance that that woman would be here. And she was intelligent and well-educated and charming. Well, I call it our cheat code because I was getting nowhere on those swiping sites and I was yeah, having a here. miserable time same here. dating and trying to find somebody. Yeah. And like I said, I'm not going to a bar to hit on anybody and God bless if I go into a, a supermarket to hit on anybody. I don't even know their status, right? They could yeah. be married with yeah, kids. Exactly. I don't know. So I had to use my cheat code which I worked very hard for, which was dangling financial assistance. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, like you, I started getting the messages. They actually responded to me. That was a refreshing change for me. And now I could actually pick and choose who I wanted to go out with. I also really started having a lot of fun dating. Well, it was interesting because I knew I had some limitations going into it with regard to who I was going to be interested in and who I wasn't going to be interested in because I did want intimacy, no question about that, but I also wanted some company as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, A I nice wanted, balance. I wanted some conversation as yeah. well, mm -hmm. which means being 60 years old when I started doing this, the chances of finding that in a 25-year-old were virtually zero. And it's not that 15 or 20 years down the road, they wouldn't be great company. But at 25, they weren't there for me yet. And I knew it was my issue, not theirs. There'd be plenty of guys that liked them. Yeah. But so I started searching older and older. And you have to, one thing you have to resolve with yourself is what you're actually looking for. If you're looking for the truth, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, if you want, I mean, if I walked up to Lily and Lily said, you are the most handsome man I ever saw, <laughs> I couldn't take that with a straight face. Right. I just said, Lily, your credibility has gone to zero. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh, come and on. So, you know, you hear things like that. And, you know, if you start believing the bulk of what you hear, you're taking a little paid vacation from reality. <laughs> you just, you, <laughs> you have to be honest with yourself about what's being said whether it's true, how much of that fantasy you want to buy into, how much of that fantasy you're comfortable buying into. I like a little of it. I don't like a whole lot of it. I'd like to think there was a certain element of reality in there. Yeah, but with women, men become much more handsome as their personality is favorable. Like, th that man can be very handsome initially, but if he's not a good person, his personality sucks then all of a sudden to a woman, he is not very good looking. Well, that is that's accurate. Yeah, that's specifically why I did the vibe. Yeah. Because I knew I wouldn't get by on the pictures. I mean, I look exactly like my pictures, but <laughs> I have no illusions about that. Some people are going to like the pictures. Some people aren't going to like yeah. the pictures. Yeah. I thought if I put the sound and the action and the sense that you get from listening to somebody speak, seeing the move, getting what their overall to use an overused term, what their energy is, that allows you to make a much better choice. In fact, if I message somebody and they message me back and we exchange telephone numbers, the first thing I send them is a 10 or 12 second video, just completely G-rated. I'm walking through the house and I talk into my phone, I make them a video, hello, hi, thank you so much, to let them know who's going to be showing up. That's a great idea. Yeah, I just, I'm not going to send my pictures. I like that idea. I think, I think more men should do that. Yeah. To give that person a good vibe of what they're, they're dealing with. I do think that because very few women will do that. One of the things I use as, as a screening process is if someone will not talk with me on the telephone, uh, that's pretty much, I pretty much exclude them. Yeah, that's suspicious. Yeah, that's suspicious. Why would you not? And strange things happen. I'll tell you that things run in cycles on that website. There's been a brand new thing that I've never seen before on that website, and this is odd, and four people have contacted me lately, and this has been the case. They will contact you, and they're extremely attractive, but they state in their message, I'm deaf, 100% or 79% deaf, I cannot have a functional telephone conversation with you. <laughs> wow. Yes, it's really interesting. Uh, one of them I got pictures from, and I thought, oh, my God. I uh, this spectacular-looking woman, 35 years old. 
And I looked at her and I thought, mm mm, let's, let's apply a little realism here. She is out of your class. And now I know there is one deaf girl on the site. She's been on there for a long time and we've actually chatted quite a bit. We were supposed to meet up and just things never did. And we've conversed back and forth, but she is local. So I know she's actually real. But the other ones, I would think, I've tried to contact people before, and they're like... Sounds like a new scam. Oh, I'm in a meeting. I, I can't am, talk right now I'm or something like that. I'm going to show Lily two pictures that are not necessarily in the best of taste, but they're not X-rated either. Okay. This is what the woman looks like. Oh, I'm... Wow. Now, mm-hmm. now Lily, what are the chances... <laughs> <laughs> you can tell me the truth here, and I'll know if you're lying, Lily. What? What are the chances that that woman, since she can't look at my vibe, she can't listen to anything I've said, what are the chances that out of everybody on that site, particularly when she looks at the numbers, she's going to contact me? Yeah. You want to put a probability on that, <laughs> Lily? It is unlikely. You're right. Put a number on it, Lily. Um, Close to zero. Close to zero. <laughs> okay, there we Close go. Close to zero. I have no problem with that, by the way. Yeah. I have well, no just she's super young and super hot, and oh. yeah, and she's probably not necessarily well. Looking and for then somebody. The, the young hot ones that I've actually talked to and met say they have more messages in their inbox than they can possibly get to. They yes. don't have time to yes. be going through yes, exactly. messaging people. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's a red flag right there. So I look at this and I said, "Let's do a video call." And she did a video call, but it was about 10 or 12 seconds long on WhatsApp. And then the call was dropped. But she didn't acknowledge my presence in the call. It looked like a canned 10 or 12 seconds that had been taped some other time that she'd plugged into the WhatsApp call. Mm -hmm. And you get all this incredible romantic verbiage that they send to you, and I mean, it would make a Harlequin romance reader <laughs> blush. I mean, <laughs> Most of our, Why don't they just write books for their I money? Mean, yeah. <laughs> God, you read this stuff, and you better read it before dinner. Most of our younger listeners don't know what the Harlequin no, romance novels whoa. are, but we all do. <laughs> yeah, we do. It is just way over the top stuff, and I got a, a recent message from somebody else in Canada, same thing, 79% yeah. functionally deaf, can't talk on the telephone, And you get the same kind of stuff. So you got to weed through. Anytime there's a financial component, there's going to be scammers. And unfortunately, I think they're trying to scam the girls more than they are the guy, from what I hear. I think you're quite right about that. Most of the scams that run on you on that website are so obvious. Yeah. I mean, I saw the, oh, I shouldn't say this. I saw those scams the first time before most of these girls were born. Yeah. So I hate to, <laughs> hate to say that. Stop laughing, Lily. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, these are but some old recycled I mean, scams, is, but you know yeah. why they, they're doing them? Because people keep falling for them. Some mm-hmm. people, some men are lonely enough yeah. to fall for them. It's and then the simple. girls, some are desperate enough that they will accept the gift cards and send the money back to Nigeria. And then there, there is the <laughs> other thing. I think the thing that irritates me most about that website is all of the contacts that I get from gorgeous girls in Ecuador I get, yeah. and Paraguay. Hey, we love Ecuador. And, and Colombia. And what Venezuela they, is a big one I Ven, get. Oh, Venezuela is huge. Yeah. And what they want to do is sell you softcore porn. Yeah. And it's Buy just, your pictures. It's just tiresome. I get tired. You can watch porn free on the internet. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> You've got all you want on there, the internet. And, you do. and many Why of the are we girls paying for this? Well, and many of the girls I talk to just send it to me for free anyway. Well, so. I mean, the first thing I ever bought on the internet in 1995 were VHS porn movies. Really? Yes, because I didn't want to go down to Castle or yeah anywhere else and be seen there in public. So I bought it on the line. They shipped it to my house, brown paper bag on my front steps. That's funny. The thing that killed me about it, I ultimately gave them away, and I gave them to my significant other. She loved that kind of thing. And she said, oh, I've got to show these to my girlfriends. My <laughs> girlfriends are going to love these. So I gave them to her. Uh, I took an MBA class over at Arizona State University yeah. and got my MBA degree in 2003. <laughs> well, and it was from Arizona State. Yeah, mine was way. quite delayed. I took yeah. some time off, but it was a goal of mine. But anyway, I took this very interesting class. It was a couple, a, an older couple that had taught it. And it was basically on how the internet is progressing and what 
drives the internet. Mm -hmm. And the number one thing that drives technology and improvement on the internet is porn. Yeah, I believe they're trying to figure out faster, better, more realistic ways to bring that to you because of the dollars amount Mm -hmm. uh, that it brings into these people that produce it. They drive technology on the internet. And now that you have virtual reality, <laughs> right? and virtual reality goggles, and Mark Zuckerberg creating Meta, mm-hmm. I can tell you there will be a part of Meta. Oh, sure. It ultimately will happen, whether it's hackers or whether they do it another way. But yes, that's going to happen. It is. You're listening to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Hey, thanks for listening so far, and we've got a lot of good stuff still ahead. But I need to take just a minute. I have a friend, Maria Scaptura. She is a Ph.D. student at Virginia Tech, and she's doing some research on sugar dating. And she needs to talk to some sugar daddies and some sugar babies, but mainly we are seeking input from sugar daddies, and she wants to hear your experiences and your pathway into this. Hey, now it's completely anonymous. It's unrecorded, and it's a lot of fun. I did it, and you will really help us out if you... Give your thoughts and opinions on sugar dating. So go to the website, secretsofasugardaddy.com. Click on the ad. There's a quick survey. Or you can email her at scaptura at vt.edu. And that's spelled S-C-A-P-T-U-R-A at vt.edu. All right, back to the show. You're listening to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Have a comment or want to be on the show? Okay. Find us at secretsofasugardaddy.com. Now back to the show with your host, Marcus. Okay, so let's move on. I have yep. so much to talk to you about, and yep. I, this is going fantastic, and I know we're, our hour is going to run out quickly. But So you've been on the site for seven or eight years. Mm-hmm. Let me just kind of lead... Uh, our audience on how you get from messaging to an arrangement or do you meet them for coffee? Do you message them first? Are you only responding to messages that you get? What's Uh, your process? Actually, most of the time it's messages that I send out because I know what I'm interested in. Yeah, Most men are very visual. I look at the pictures. I know. Same. And I will. And then there's an age restriction. I don't want to meet anybody under 30 and I really should say 35, Mm -hmm. but I haven't put that in the profile. But I see the pictures, I send them a message, and the vibe is up now. So if they respond, my response is, listen, if you're interested in taking this further and discussing getting together, I'll send you my mobile number. Okay. Some accept it, some don't, some respond with their mobile number. We exchange texts. Ideally, in addition to exchanging texts, I would want to talk with them on the telephone before I meet them in person. Yeah. And a lot of them refuse to do that. And that I use to weed out a lot of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, because there's a code on that website, there are a series of actions that will tell you whether you're dealing with an escort or whether you're dealing with somebody. And although that's saying escort is more a terminology issue to me than it is anything else, I'm not interested in somebody who does it for a living full time or even most of the time. Mm -hmm. I'm not. The chances of anything being true in that situation are below zero. (laughs) I mean, if you can get below zero, that's it. So that kind of weeds everything out. And then they'll ask me what I'm looking for. And sometimes we'll exchange numbers in the text. Sometimes we do it in person. And I'm very upfront about it. I've done allowances a couple of times, and there were some downsides that I really didn't like about allowances. Number one, once the lady had her allowance and she felt she was secure, she was much less interested. And it got much less interesting. There. Now, you mean a weekly allowance or what are you talking monthly. about? Monthly, monthly allowance. Okay. So she just wasn't as available if she was on allowance as she would have been if it was PPP. The availability was still kind of there, but two things happened. There wasn't the interest when you were together with her. Plus the fact there was a constant stream of requests for, I remember one was my kids need cell phones. I know I'm on an allowance, but would you buy them cell phones? And that's what the allowance is for. Did you buy the cell phones? I bought one of them. (laughs) 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 Yeah, I'm in your same boat too, because I've done 
pay per meet or yeah. pay per visit, pay per play, weekly allowance, monthly allowance. Yeah. And I feel like the same thing happened to me. Once I gave them that monthly allowance, it kind of started putting pressure on the relationship because now I've, I, I'm wanting to get my money's worth for better terminology, right? Yes, exactly. And they didn't seem to be as available. Uh, I feel exactly the same way about that. Plus the fact the other thing that happened was, it, I remember one really good example of this. Very attractive woman, I gave her a monthly allowance. She agreed to the number, three months into it, she walked in and she sat down and she said, hey listen, I'm really worth 40% more than that. <laughs> <laughs> of course they are. And she didn't get an immediate response and she looked at me and said, is that a no? And I said, well, that's definitely a no. <laughs> no response is a response. Don't get to come in three months after the fact and do it quite that blatantly. Mm -hmm. If you're more subtle about it, if you're more sophisticated about it, maybe. But you'd have to be really smooth. I have questions. <laughs> yeah. Why 40% and how did she justify that? She justified it because things were going very well between us. She knew that I liked her personally, that I actually liked her as an individual. Okay. She knew that to be really direct about it, I thought she was extremely good in bed. And she figured, okay, I've got some leverage. I'm going to exercise the leverage. And I understood what she was doing. I did. And I didn't like it. The answer was no. But I still talked with her occasionally. Mm -hmm. because she's an extremely decent person. I liked her a lot as an individual, but I don't want someone coming in when they feel they have leverage and exercising it because if you think you have leverage, you better be sure you have leverage because you may not have leverage. I like treating people well. I like being complimentary. And the first conclusion you can draw if you're a woman from that is I've got this guy exactly where I want him. Let's exercise a little leverage. Mm -hmm. Well, courtesy is one thing, but if you want to negotiate, that's another. Right. So. Was there an approach she could have taken where she could have gotten a yes? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Lily's got a grin, grin from ear to ear. If I thought the number, Lily, were fair going in, it would have been hard to do. Mm -hmm. If I thought that I had lowballed her and gotten away with it, then okay, the door is open a crack. <laughs> gotcha. You can come back and say, okay, it really should be that. Yeah. But my approach, if it were pay per meet, would be I would name a number and I would tell them up front before we ever meet, if whether it was on the phone or by text, that I do pay per meet mm -hmm. to begin with. And we will have to find out whether, in fact, we're actually compatible personally, whether physically we're actually attracted to one another in person. And to take it a step further, to be direct about it, some people are very compatible in bed, other people aren't. And mm -hmm. there's no way to tell. There, there really is no, way to, no way to tell. I have been shocked more times than yeah. I can count of somebody who outperformed what I thought they would be. And then somebody else who I thought would be a fireball was a pillow princess. And you're just like, you're just going to lay there. <laughs> you know, I, and the thing about it is, I mean, to be fair in that kind of situation, I honestly don't point the finger in that situation. It is a chemistry thing. Mm -hmm. And if you can tell me what chemistry is and why it happens, I want to hear it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I am, I am willing to listen to that explanation yeah. because sometimes the rapport is there, the attraction is there. Sometimes it flatly isn't. Yeah, I've looked at women that I thought were not terribly attractive, and I met them in person. I sat down and I thought, oh yes, definitely yes. But if they don't like the idea of pay per meet for two or three times, a lot of them will tell me that's too transactional for me. I understand that. In that case, you've got a syntax problem, and it's a terminology problem more than anything else because it makes them feel as though they're being escorts, mm -hmm. when in fact it's an exchange of intimacy for some form of security. Call it whatever you like. But some people have been brought up to say, hey, listen, if he gives you $400 and you go to bed with him, you know what you are. And the answer is, not really. <laughs> That's... Yeah. That's really not quite the case. So it's terminology interfering in a situation which should be 
the dictates should be something other than just terminal. But a lot of uh, they'll say, uh, I really don't want to do that two or three or four times. And if they don't, that's fine. I completely understand that. Sometimes we disagree on the number. Sometimes, uh, in some cases, I've said, okay. I remember in one inst- particular instance where I met the woman, and we went out a couple of times, and we talked, and she said, you are too transactional. I really don't want to do it on this basis. And I met her months later, and we had dinner. And she named a number, and I said, no. And we parted friends. And she said, let's have a drink. And we met. And we spent some time together. And I said to her, and I'd like to feel that I'm actually telling the truth when I say this, there are men who will pay you more than I will. I won't kid you about that. There are men who will give you more money. I'd like to think that I will go out of my way to treat you better Mm -hmm. than they will whatever form of intimacy we choose. Because once you're in the house, once we're in the setting where we're going to be intimate, it's a mutual exchange. It's not a one-way street. Mm -hmm. I'm just not going to sit back and say, entertain me. I don't care for that. Right. It's an even match. You do things for her, she does things for you. You find out what the exchange is that works for you, and you take that forward. Tell me about some successful people that you've met on the site and maybe a couple stories to leave with our listeners <laughs> that are going to go, oh my God. Well, one of the things that I found early on was if you met someone in person, and this is five or six or seven years ago, this hasn't happened very much at all recently, you would meet them. If they felt there was an attraction, you would get a call within a day or two stating, I've had a personal catastrophe. Mm-hmm. I'm in serious need of money. And what that was was a test to see how much you were willing to gift them to find out if financially you were going to be pliable enough for them to be interested in. And ultimately, you see that pattern. And uh, if anybody tries that now, that's an automatic disqualification. Right. I I don't know how much of that is done anymore. It was extremely common five or six uh, years ago. Yeah, and the problem I get is once I meet someone, and maybe we've only seen each other once or twice, they start asking me, hey, can you help me with this? My, I'm short on my rent. My car broke down. Yes. And it's small amounts usually, and so you help them, and then it's a never-ending barrage of crisis issues. It escalates. Yeah. <laughs> and it escalates at the rate that you allow it to escalate. Yeah, it is true. Yeah. And <laughs> so, sometimes I feel really mean because yeah, I have the same means. Here. Same here. And it sounds like a great yeah. story and they sound genuine. But at what point do you cut them off and say the no? Two, the two terminologies that kill me that you see in a lot of profiles invest in me. Mm-hmm. Okay, please. Let's let's find any other term for that than that. <laughs> I'm, and so that one's fact, like nails on a chalkboard oh to you? God, I, I do I'm see that every now and then. Now, I mean, oh, invest in me. My response is, okay, you need to get a little smoother line than that. <laughs> like they're a stock <laughs> What's going to be my return on that investment? <laughs> yes. Exactly. Exactly right. And I think we know the answer to that. So, And the other one is, I'm looking for a mentor. Yeah. Oh, please. Now, that one is true, though, for a lot of them. I have met plenty of girls who are looking. So I'm in real estate. Yeah. And they're looking to get into real estate or Airbnbs or fix and flips, things like that. Some of them are looking in crypto and currency Mm -hmm. investing. I don't know that much about that, but there's plenty of guys on the site that do. I think you've met some. I can think of two in particular who definitely were seeking mentorship. Yeah. Okay. I don't doubt what either of you have said. Mm-hmm. I find it to be the exception. I don't think it's impossible at all. Yeah. If you tell me it happened, I believe you. Mm-hmm. To me, it's the exception rather than the rule. It's just another. That's another. just been your experience. It's, yeah. Yes, exactly. It's been my experience. Everything I'm saying is my experience. Mm-hmm. I'm sure of course. as a host, a range of other experiences. Well, our other co-host, who unfortunately was sick today, she makes more money than many of the sugar daddies. Mm-hmm. But she doesn't have the experience or knowledge. So she really does. And she's been telling us about some of these people that she's meeting. And she really does want to learn their business and how they became more successful and where they were. And the other thing is it's probably a good idea to park where I can't see your car. Because if you drive (laughs) up in a Mercedes, Uh I have a problem with that. And that's happened several times. Yeah. And I thought, isn't this interesting? 
she's driving a $125,000 car. I remember one time I was driving a Prius, and, and she pulled up in a car that cost four times what my yeah. car cost. Yeah. And I thought, okay, is this situation one that I might be comfortable in? Right. And she was doing it for sport, mm-hmm. and I understood that. Fine, I get that. But by the same token, she didn't need it. It was sport. I went on a meet and greet, just a little wine date with somebody. And then I walked her to her car and it was a brand new car. And she didn't have a job. And she really had no motivation for work. And I'm thinking, this isn't going to work. I'm not here to support your buying habits. I mean, that's just a bad decision. If I had my druthers, one of the things I look for in the beginning is, I'm interested in someone who can run their own life. I want them to be able to do it. I want them to be competent enough to be able to run their life. Mm -hmm. I certainly understand a woman with two or three children who needs some extra income. I get that 100%. But if the situation is you can't run your life, I'm really not interested in being a part of that. There honestly isn't anything I can do for you in the long run. It would be a short-term fix. I was involved in that early on several times. And I felt guilty because at some point I had to cut it off Mm -hmm. because it was obvious I couldn't do anything. Right. I just didn't want to be a part of it. So. All right. So tell me about a a nightmare date or a situation that happened. Don't say our coffee date. (laughs) (laughs) You know, we like to see the car wrecks. Well, I mean, the thing that amused me most about meeting Lily was I contacted you a couple of times anyway. No response of any kind. And I thought, she's actually going to show up in person? Mm -hmm. Did you doubt if I would show up? You're a big girl. You're an adult. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you'd show up. Okay, good. But obviously, there have been no shows. or Yeah, I've had a few of those. And the person that shows up is in no way (laughs) the person in the pictures. That's common. Or they come in and they sit down. I remember one lady came in and sat down, spoke with me for five minutes, and she said, I'm illegally parked. I'll be back. And she never came back. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> hey, listen, it happens. Yeah. I, I did that one time, but I was just, <laughs> well, you did. okay, I was semi honest. <laughs> so I met a guy for coffee, and he looked nothing like his photographs, and he was shorter than me. Mm-hmm. And he had a pot belly and I just wasn't attracted to him at all. We spoke a little bit and he had a effeminate voice. And then he told me that he had small children. And I was like, can I get my coffee to go? (laughs) You know, how how do you exit that situation? No, I just told him, I said, you know, honestly, if you had disclosed to me that you had small children, I right away would have said that mm-hmm. I didn't want to distract anyone from their priority, which should be focusing on raising yeah. your small children. And I, I'm just not comfortable dating somebody with small children. There are some situations where the best thing to do is to, as gracefully as you possibly can, exit. Yeah, You just need to That's do what it. I did. It's the best thing to do. I was nice. Now, I can understand that happening to you more than it would happen to me. <laughs> But I've had ladies show up, and I walked into the room, and they spotted me 65 or 70 pounds. And they were slender in their pictures. Yeah. And that's the situation. I want to be courteous. I'll stay 30 or 40 or 45 minutes, and I'll be very courteous. But at some point, I'm, it's going to be, I have to go, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. And, you know, no further contact from there on in. Yeah. I mean, I'm big on courtesy. I'm very courteous up to the point where somebody proves that no more courtesy is justified. (laughs) And and then it's something else. I'm the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Unless a guy is just a total asshole, I'm going to (laughs) be gracious and I'm going to be kind and I'm never going to ghost you. I'll just tell you, hey, you know, this isn't really going to go anywhere for me. And that's exactly the way I like to conduct things. And I'm also not even faintly... I'm one of the least controlling people in the world. I want you to be able to run your life because I want you to run it. I'm not going to text you 10 times a day. I'm not going to tell you how to run your life. If you have questions on something you think you might need help, please Mm -hmm. ask. I'll certainly answer the questions if I can. But the other side of the coin is there were a couple of... I was with one of the sugar babies for four or five years, and it was a sugar baby arrangement, but it was a little bit more than that as well. And the only reason we're still not together is she asked me three years ago, I've got this job in Denver. It's a job I've always wanted. Should I take it? 
Mm-hmm. And my response was, we'd been together f- four or five years by that time, and I knew that there, I have a shelf life on being monogamous. And I said, at some point, I'm going to stop doing this. And it was obvious that the right thing for her to do was to take the job. And she did. And yeah. she's done very well with it. So, you know, this is the part of the show that I absolutely hate because I still have a whole list of questions for Jack. So we're going to have to have you come back <laughs> down the future. But <laughs> well, I, this hour went so quick. I'll tell you what you can do. If you can think of what questions you'd like to ask, I'll give you my email, or you can call me, mm-hmm. and I'll just take notes. Yeah. You tell me what you're interested in asking, and let me think about it. Yeah. So I can give you a little more concise answers, a little bit better organized answers, and I'd be happy to come back any time. Oh, yeah. I like the feel of the way this has been conducted. Yeah. I think it's done in the right spirit. Well, so. the reason we started the podcast is because... I've been on the site for a little over six years. Yeah. You've been a little bit longer. I know there's a lot of diamonds in that dirt, and I've found them. I found Lily. I found many quality people that have become yeah. the best friends of my life. But getting to those people yeah. sometimes can be a nightmare, and you got to yeah. weed through a lot of bullshit, and you've seen it. Yeah. And I'm sure you've met some really great people on the I site. I can only do that site for 30 days at a time. <laughs> right? I it's do exhausting. it for 30 days, and yeah. then I'm off the site for three or four months. That's how I used to be, too. Same. Yeah. And exactly. Same. I, and then after three or four months, if I feel I'm getting desperate, I, I, will, I, will, <laughs> yeah. I will go back on the site again. But, yeah, I'm, I'm on it maybe three months a year. Yeah. And the rest of the time, I just... I lose patience with having to, I lose patience with the process. Yeah. Because most of the time, the process is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, it isn't. Once in a while, it's very different. And that's what I'm mainly interested in. Yeah. All right. Well, very good, Jack. You've brought a lot to the conversation. I know our listeners are going to find some value in some of the things that you've told us. Lily, (laughs) as always. Yeah, this was fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. It's really fun. Thank you for coming. My pleasure. All right. If you want to share your sugar dating stories or questions, go to our website at secretsofasugardaddy.com and also follow us on Instagram. Same name, Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. And we're really hoping you're enjoying all the extra sugar that we've been pouring on. So make sure that you find those little tidbits uh, between episodes. All right. Until next episode. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to connect or even be on the show, we'd love to hear from you at secretsofasugardaddy.com.